It's clear Roger Federer is a popular champion, but it's what we don't see. The interaction behind the scenes with the media and players that defines the kind of champion he is. What you see is what you get. I, th I think, um, as someone once said, uh, he's a, just a normal superstar. And there aren't that many of those around. He just handles himself really well as a person. I think it's a, a really great trait to have and a lot of people get lost in the whole celebrity, sort of high, you know, he's just so marketable all around the world, everyone knows who he is. But he's just such a down-to-earth, really nice guy and I think that's probably the most special thing about him. It's nice to get respect from your fellow players, absolutely. I tried to be the normal person I am, I tried to be myself. They see that I'm trying my best, you know, to promote the tour, to make tennis a better place, you know, trying to get sponsors in and, you know, I do spend a lot of time doing interviews and it's obviously nice to hear good comments. Back in New York, Federer's ability to raise his game impressed a fellow champion. His understanding of just himself, um, what he needs, and especially in the big points. Uh, we both love to, to be tested, to you know, find out what we have inside and in ourselves, um, whether we can bring out our best stuff at the right time. That is a rush, and it is a rush to, to play your best in, in the biggest events and to have you know, your game peak physically and mentally um, in the biggest events. That's what it's all about. A pattern was emerging. Victory in Melbourne proved that mentally many opponents were beaten before they were even on court. But every champion has a nemesis. Rafael Nadal, the king of clay. At Roland Garros, he has been unbeatable at Federer's cost. A special feeling always, you no? Know, play against the number one and not a normal number number one, no? Play who, number one like Roger, probably the best of the history. He feel a little bit more pressure when he play against me because I'm the number two. When I beat him, I I always play a very very good match. Always beat him. In one Grand Slam is, is a special feeling because he's an unbelievable player. The win against against Roger or against the number one is always a little bit of special signification. Nadal has stopped Federer winning the French Open on three occasions. I'll try everything I have in my power to, to achieve my goal there, my ultimate goal to win the French Open as well, because I know I got the game, and this is very important that you know that you have it. I think he's going to win, but if he finds that that doesn't happen, in my opinion, he's the best. <laughs> I think finally this is only a game. So when, when the game is, is finished, after that, that's a stupid thing about more rivalry outside of court, no? It's a lot of more important things than, than tennis or life. So in these moments, uh, the tennis is a very important part of our life, but after the tennis, we have our life too. I've played with Nadal now on many occasions. I admire him a lot for his game and you know what he's achieved in his young ages already. And I've had some phenomenal matches against him. There comes a time when every champion has to stare directly into the eyes of adversity. At the 2007 Wimbledon final, the future of tennis hung in the balance. Roger was aiming to equal Bjorn Borg's five in a row. The stage was set for an historic battle between the world's top two. Components were there. You're, you're, you're playing this guy who suddenly has got it as far as grass is concerned. The script could not have been better. The number one against the number two, and Nadal was brilliant. It 
was full of absolutely magnificent tennis. Two players at the height of their game, desperate to win. You had it with Borg and McEnroe, that's for sure. But I just think there's an, there's an extra element to the fact that Nadal, especially at Wimbledon now, you so desperately wants to win it. The rivalry they, they've been having, Federer and, and Nadal, it's, it's great. I mean, they bring out the best from each other. They play great tennis every time they play. Uh, it's good for tennis uh, in general. taken to a fifth set for the first time in his Grand Slam final career. He dug deep and began to tame Nadal's onslaught. In the toughest match of his life, Federer was the embodiment of grit and determination. After five grueling sets, Federer's moment of victory had come. I've gotten this on this on this great run, you know, five in a row now, and I've gotten up to the levels of Bjorn Borg. It's uh, an absolute dream come true. It's almost disbelief still to some degree. later in New York, Federer signed off on another momentous year with a winning performance at Flushing Meadows. His fourth US Open title brought his current Grand Slam tally to 12. A bit mystery, who, who was the greatest of all time? Is it Rod Laver? Is it Pete Sampras? Who is it, you know? What do you need to win to become the greatest of all time? All I can do is give my best and I think we should then judge my uh, career at the very, very end and see where I'm at.